And I, I think the understanding here and what he's doing is he's simulating in his own life, though he were the king of Israel, and though he is a saved individual, he is starting to act out what I deem the, the find myself moment. This midlife crisis that so many people come across where suddenly they find this intense desire to find themselves. I'm going to go out and I'm going to find myself. And these midlife journeys quite often end in destruction. It destroys what has always been. Do you know where this quite often plays out? Where, where the wife gets gets bitter about where she's at in life and she reflects and says, oh, things could have been so much different had I done such and such and such. And she plays this out in her mind to the point where she can't take it anymore and now she's off to find herself. Men do the same thing where they, where they, where they maybe buy an expensive car in order to satisfy that missing craving of that midlife identity crisis that they're seeking after. And they'll do the same thing to the wife. You know, they'll run off with some young thing and then leave the wife, and leave the child, and do all those things, because they're finding themselves. Because they're proving their own hearts with mirth. They're enjoying pleasure, according to the vanity that's about to be described. How often do you hear that? I need to go find myself. What they're saying is, I need to, in this present moment, please myself. I'm sick of pleasing everybody else around me. I need to find mirth in my life. I need to find that pleasure in my life, and now I'm off to find that. Too often people these days, they dissociate what their present identity should be, and that's in the relationships around them that they build. I am who I am because of my parents, because of my wife, because of my child. That all emboldens and embodies who Josh Gander is. My relationship, my association one with another, with people around me, is, is truly what makes up my personal <coughs> identity. And yet too often people these days are associating their identity, not with who they are, but with what they do. You see people that are like, I am a welder, that's what I am. And then their job lays them off, and what are they? They're nothing. Right? The people that, I am a housewife. And then the kids grow up and they leave, well then what are you now? We associate our identity with what we do, and this is wrong. And this is why when a catastrophe happens in midlife, or the kids move out, or the situation changes, things aren't the same as they were the day before, the week before, the month before, the year before, right around that midlife crisis when suddenly everything is changing, right? Women are, are facing uh, physical changes. Men are now leaning towards retirement. Uh, jobs change. People change. Kids move out. The situation changes, and it comes so abruptly on people because we're so used to routine that when what I do suddenly changes, I have no identity of myself. I don't know what I am because I've tied it all up in what I have done. We need to tie up, on a worldly carnal level, our persona within the framework of who we interact with, of who we are amongst people. It needs to be associated with an outward vantage point. Okay, well, to the Christian, that just sounds very worldly and carnal. I believe that would solve the problem if they related what they were with their relationships around them and built on that in the worldly sense. But Christians ought to have the mentality that our identity is not with who we are amongst people in this world. Our identity is Christ himself. Amen. Galatians Amen. chapter 2 and verse 20 says, Amen. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That yet not I mentality needs to be prevalent in Christians. That way when we're shaked, my life is all in turmoil, my life is falling apart. Well, my life is in Christ. And Christ is a solid rock and he ain't going nowhere. Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus is the same. We just sang that today. And that is where identity, our identity needs to reside. It That's needs right. to reside in heaven. We need to identify as crucified with Christ, dead yet alive unto God Amen. through him. That is where the Christian's identity needs to be. And that way, when my job changes, when my kids grow up and leave the house, when I, when I, when I, I, I go to a different church, when, when, when my, my wife uh, passes away, when all sorts of things happen in people's lives that shake them to the core, the Christian doesn't move because he's always on the rock. 
And this is why you'll see situations in Christian's life. You're like, what in the world? How could they ever go through this? You look at Job. You look at his character story in, within that. He didn't budge because he was fixed on the solid rock of Christ, on the solid rock of God Almighty as he knew him at the time. And that's why Job didn't budge. He didn't wink at the situations that were for him, but rode the storms unto the end and was blessed many times, many fold over and over because of his steadfastness in the things of God. His identity was in God. All may change, but Jesus never. Glory to his name. Everything can change in this world, and if you're firmly fixed in the solid rock of Christ, you will not budge. And that's where our identity needs to be, according to Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, and many other like verses that talk about being dead in Christ, nevertheless risen again. We need to understand that and reckon those things to be true and practically live out as if that were the case.